We talked about human factors, right? All these physical aspects. We as IT people, of course, we know the technology is the most important part, right? Because that's the part we're involved in. Now, sometimes people will say to me, okay, well that's great. Isn't that enough? Well, remember, again, we're talking about humans. It actually isn't enough. So another very, very important component is cognitive science. Particularly well, if you look out in some of the techniques that are used in industry and in the research out in the literature, a lot of it focuses on the mind and studying the mind. And so sometimes people who aren't very familiar in the area will say, well, why do we want to study the mind? Does that really matter? It seems kind of, you know, off over in the psychological field, not really involved in IT. Well, studying the mind actually helps us in a number of ways. Of course, there's artificial intelligence, right? There's uh, genetic algorithms for learning and those sorts of things. Those are very closely tied with our understanding of the mind and how the mind works. And so if you look at those fields and you look at the technologies that are coming out, you actually find that computers can be made more intelligent can be made where they can respond better to humans by looking at and reflecting upon what makes us intelligent. So, if you look at things like neural nets, does anyone know what neural nets was based on? The idea. Um, the connection between the like the, the brain. Right, the brain and the connections between the neurons. That's what it was based on. That's how it, it initially evolved. And researchers today are still trying to get a better understanding of how the brain works and how the mind works to try to improve that technology. Because as much as we talk about how powerful computing is, what we actually find is that the human brain is more powerful than any computer out there for many, many, many things. There are things that we as humans can do that computers simply cannot. We'll get into that a little more later. So it's questions like, how does the mind work? What about the brain? And what's the difference? And if you look at this as a whole again, you look at cognitive science. And if you look in the literature at universities, you'll find that it's the science that explains how people accomplish various types of thinking. We're going to be talking about different types of thinking. Because even when we perceive something, when we look at something, and that information is being brought into our mind, you're still thinking about it. You still have to process that information. Now, cognitive science does have some, I guess, concepts that I really want you to have a good understanding of because it's going to help you understand what we talk about later in the semester. One of the key things I want you to remember is that knowledge in the mind consists of what are called mental representations. Now, what are mental representations? They're basically where we have mental procedures in our mind. These are things that we do that will operate on these mental representations. And that produces thought and action. So given that, who wants to give me an example of what do you think a mental representation is and what would be a mental procedure that operates on it? No one? By the way, none of my classes have gotten this right at this point yet. Adding. I'm sorry? Adding. adding would be, yes, okay, so adding, adding would be the mental procedure. What is the representation if you're adding things? Numbers. Right, so the numbers. So a number, for example, is a mental representation. There's not a real number one floating around in your head. Right, it is a mental representation of that. All right, so I'm going to take a look at this table here. Now I am thinking about this table. What's the mental representation? The table. The table. All right, I'm standing up here talking. You're hearing me use words. The words are the mental representation. That's right. So it's basically a global concept. And how we think about things really, some would argue, revolve around 
mental representations. If you don't have mental representations, you can't think. If you don't have any procedures to operate on these mental representations, again, you can't think. And then that, of course, doesn't translate itself into action. And with, as you see with some of the examples that I provided, different kinds of mental representations can foster different kinds of mental procedures. Right, so if you are producing a beautiful painting, you're not going to be adding numbers in your head to help produce that painting. It's not that I know. Unless you're coloring by numbers. That's right. I'm going to use that example. That's great. 